Hi folks and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley of Ashley Plants and Reads and today I am finally giving you my August reading recap. So we're just gonna get started going through the books that I read in the month of August. It's kind of a weird reading month for me. Uh, two of the six books total that I read were read alouds with my kids um, that we that I finished and so that feels a little unusual. I, I was having a hard time just getting into much of anything, wanting to pick pick up uh, much of anything. So this was a weird reading month for me. I still have not finished Americana. I think I'm pushing pause on that one. I don't know why, but I just, I love it while I'm reading it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it while I'm reading it, but I don't ever find myself wanting to pick it up. Um, and whenever I am reading a book and get like that, I find myself just not reading anything at all. I decided to just push pause. I'll come back to that one at another time, uh, but I just, I needed to be reading. So I picked up something else and actually that really helped, but we'll get to that. So I had three audiobooks and three paper books uh, this month. Um, two of the paper books were the read alouds with my kids. It's just that kind of, I don't know, just that kind of reading month for me. So the first book was an audiobook and it was Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. I mentioned this in my currently reading video and I did finally finish it. That one kind of took me, usually I, you know, tear through audiobooks really quickly, but that one took me a little while, but it was really, really good. It's about the Galvin family, uh, who was a family living in Colorado. Uh, they had 12 children. 10 boys, two girls, the two girls were the youngest, and six of the boys uh, were ultimately diagnosed with schizophrenia, and they ended up being studied. Uh, and in, we know a lot of what we know about schizophrenia now in large part thanks to this family. Um, it was a difficult read just in terms of family dynamics and some of the more triggering aspects, you know, mental illness, Obviously, uh, there was abuse of all kinds um, and just just some really hard things to read about. So if those are triggers for you, steer clear. So this is not a memoir. Robert Kolker is more like a journalist and there's a lot of the science behind schizophrenia and other mental illnesses and the history of how we have come to understand schizophrenia specifically, but um, mental illness kind of in general. Some of which, as a mother <laughs> who has um, dealt with mental illness herself, I found quite infuriating. The history of like blaming mothers for mental illness, basically like neglect or being too harsh or um, too cold or whatever, you name it, they blamed mothers for um, their children's mental illness. Um, and that was, that was hard for me to read. The story and the way that Kolker weaves in uh, the science and the history of mental illness was um, really well done, very well told. It was really good. Yeah, so that was the first book I read. That was Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. The second one that I finished was The Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. This was a read aloud with the kids. This was actually one of my favorite books as a child. I read this one over and over. And actually, when we had to do a report on an animal in elementary school, I don't remember what grade it was, maybe third or fourth grade, I chose The Trumpeter Swan because of this book. The kids really enjoyed it. It was a little slow getting into it at first. The dad swan is pedantic and insufferable, <laughs> but like he's drawn that way, meant to be that way, and, and the mom swan is very aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was just kind of amusing to me and the kids loved his like grand speeches and they thought it was hilarious and they loved Lewis and were were hoping that at the end he would give his voice back. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. But it's just a really sweet story of a boy and a swan who is born without a voice and so his father, the dad swan, goes and um, steals a trumpet for him from a music store in a very dramatic fashion. And then Lewis, the, the swan with no voice. So he goes to school with Sam. He learns how to write and read. And so he has like a slate chalkboard around his neck. And so he communicates with humans that way. 
and then learns how to communicate with um, his trumpet and he goes and he earns a bunch of money so that he can pay for the trumpet that his father stole and it's just kind of like his life story and his search for love and his search to find a vo his voice and it's just a really sweet story and the kids loved it. I have always loved it. So that was The Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. The next book that I read was actually an audiobook. Uh, I did mention this one briefly in one of my Plan With Me's and that book is Not All Boys Are Blue by George M. Johnson. This is actually a young adult memoir. The audiobook is read by the author and I, it was it was really really good and what I loved most about it was that it was specifically meant to be a young adult memoir because it is a story about a young black queer man who is discovering his identity and who he is both um, in his blackness and in his queerness as he calls it and and just kind of trying to navigate that intersection of identities and it, particularly in communities that uh, don't understand or accept them although he 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 did have a wonderful family who loved and accepted him and and so he just talks through his experiences and he says from the outset very very specifically that this is written for young people who may find themselves in similar situations and I just want them to know that they're not alone and and I just thought that that was really wonderful and uh, there are difficult topics covered because being young black and queer in America is a difficult thing and he has experiences that are hard to read about, but as he says, they are also experiences that many young people have, um, whether we want to see that or not, or think about it or not. And it's important for our young people to see themselves reflected in literature and um, whether that's in memoir or fiction. And so I really, really love this one. You know, it's it's an experience completely outside of my own, but I think that that's really important to read is experiences outside of my own. And I I really appreciated this one and uh, think that our young people should, should definitely read it. And we should not collect our pearls about some of the content that's in there because like it or not, our kids are dealing with, um, with similar things. So that was Not All Boys Are Blue by George M. Johnson. The next book, uh, another audiobook, was <laughs> Open Book by Jessica Simpson. Yeah, I'm as surprised as you are that I read this one. It's her memoir of her life and career, and I really enjoyed it. I was never much of a Jessica Simpson fan um, of her music, especially. I did watch Newlyweds on MTV when it was airing. Um, I like probably a lot of millennials was just fascinated and captivated by the story that was being told on that show. Um, and she gives a lot of really good, you know, behind the scenes kind of information. She pulls no punches with um, any of her experiences and relationships, parents and husbands and boyfriends included. And I just, it was really, uh, well done. I mean, she definitely had like a ghostwriter. Um, it wasn't just her, but it was it was really well done. Listening to it on audio, hearing it in her voice, she she gets very emotional in a lot of um, parts because there are a lot of emotional things that she's talking about, and I just found it found that really relatable because I myself am a very emotional person. I always appreciate when other people are not afraid to share their emotions because I certainly am not. I I really enjoyed uh, Jessica Simpson's memoir open book surprisingly all right the next one I mean if I haven't made you sick of hearing about it yet I will right now um, but I'm not sick of talking about it because it's really that good and that is ignite the sun by Hannah C Howard I read it I finished it I loved it I'm I'm biased <laughs> I know that <laughs> because I know and love her personally but um Hannah has written a gift in this book, particularly for young girls, but it is so important to also put um, stories of young heroines in the hands of our boys also. Um, 
And so believe me, my children, both of them will be reading this one eventually. It's the story of Syria Night Nightingale and she is a young woman growing up in a kingdom of darkness and she comes to learn that she is a nymph um, known as a sun child. And she learns that it is up to her to bring back the light to the kingdom. There are other nymphs and mages and magical creatures that are helping her on this quest. Um, and it's just, the characters are so dear and delightful. I fell in love with them instantly. The world that she built is magical and um, rich and I really like could feel myself in Umbra's in the darkness and, and I felt Ciri's longing for the light. It's just so, so beautiful and so, I mean, much like Not All Boys Are Blue, I think this is something that our young people really, really ought to be reading. There's a, a very strong theme of finding yourself and being oh, not just okay, but like happy with who you are, loving yourself uh, regardless of anything else. And I just think that's such an important message for our young people. And um, I've already gifted it to a young girl in my life who I just think the world of and want her to have this story in her hands. And, I, and I'm so glad that it has been written and I can put it in her hands and the hands of other girls like her. And frankly, as an adult woman, I needed to hear this story. <laughs> I am just so grateful to Hannah uh, for writing this, this book, writing such a gift for the world. Read it. I don't care if you're a young girl, young boy, an old man, or anything in between. Ignite the Sun by Hannah C. Howard. It's fantastic. All right. And then the last book is um, the second read aloud I did with uh, the kids. And that is the classic, The Boxcar Children by mm, Gertrude Chandler Warner. Um, this is a library book um, and this one just holds up. There is some uh, outdated um, fat phobia kinds of stuff in here, but otherwise it completely holds up. It's so, so charming. The kids loved the idea of living in a boxcar, which I remember from my childhood reading it that I just thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. Anyway, it's just really dear. They loved it. We are going to keep reading this series because they had such a good time with it. So that's The Boxcar Children by Gertrude Chandler Warner. And that's going to do it. That was my August reading recap. Uh, six books total, which I know is a lot. Like, objectively, that's a lot of books for one month. For me, it was not a great reading month. But Ignite the Sun really got my reading mojo back going. And um, I've already finished one book um, this month and am uh, just started another one last night that I am so excited about and I'm really enjoying it and I think I'm going to tear through that one. Yeah, so that was reading for me in the month of August and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this month. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you feel so inclined. If you're not subscribed already, please do so and let me know what you're reading. What was your favorite book you read in August? Um, and I will see you soon. Bye.